Valentine's Day, everybody. We've got a fire going, we've got a cup of tea, and I just thought it would be really nice to sit down and have a little fireside chat today. And in doing so, I completely forgot that fires make noise. And so, you know, if there's just a lot of cracks and pops in this video and it's annoying, I'm sorry, but I've lit it already and there's no turning back now. So just think of it as like a little ASMR background mood setting noise as we talk today about love. Or more like logic, not really love. I mean, logic and love and why the two of them should be friends. <laughs> so for years on this channel, I used to really pride myself in doing all the Katie the Relationship Guru who has never been in a relationship before videos. They were really fun. It was a little gimmick I did. And I kind of built my platform talking about relationships. And then something happened where I got into a relationship and I just stopped giving relationship advice. I don't know if anyone else noticed, but I did living it out. It felt kind of weird. Like I had been talking about relationships and then all of a sudden I just stopped talking talking about relationships. But I thought for today, I'd finally kind of tell more of the story and hopefully give people some big things to think about when deciding to date somebody because I logically decided to marry David before I was in love with him. And I know that sounds weird, but hear me out. <laughs> I feel like logic gets a really bad rep and I'm not trying to say that like everything needs to be cerebral and no emotions. Like if you know me, you know that that's not how I live my life. But I think that this idea of, you know, love will conquer all and it doesn't matter what happens in life. If you have love, it'll be fine. It's not a thing that doesn't work. That's not true. Like there are some things that yes, love can conquer. And there are some things that just like practically on paper, you can love each other a lot, but like this is a huge deal and it might break you <laughs> no matter how much you love each other. So basically the gist of it is when it comes to like the timeline for what happened with me and David is he was adamantly pursuing me for two years straight. And I was adamantly turning him down for two years straight. <laughs> and for good reasons, like our lifestyles did not match up. If you know me, you know that I'm a Christian and my faith is really important to me. So obviously my faith was gonna be a big part of my, you know, marriage, you know, relationships, but ultimately marriage as well. And so our lifestyles were not jiving during those two years. And so I kept telling him no, kept telling him no, because it wouldn't work. Like even if we had fun dating, like it was inevitably gonna end in heartbreak if, we lived the same lives that we lived at the time, they would not have matched up. But he kept at it. Like this man pursued me, even though I kept saying no. And finally, towards the end of those two years, God was working in his life, God was working in my life. And all of a sudden, like things started changing. And I realized that all these reasons I'd been saying no were going away. And now there was a bunch of reasons to say yes. And it was a really weird shift because I had just in my head been like, it's never gonna work, it's never gonna work, it's never gonna work, no. And then all of a sudden it was like, wait, but like, yes, maybe? Basically the short of it is, I took like two weeks and just prayed a bunch about it and was like, I feel like these things are changing. I'm gonna pray about this and see if I'm right. And eventually logically thought through the four big things I wanna talk about in today's video and came to the conclusion to basically marry David. And so I told him, sure, okay, let's do it. Let's date, let's be together. But I do wanna make it very clear before I talk about this, that in my head, I had thought through four things I'm gonna talk about and I felt like, okay, by dating David, I'm basically agreeing to marry him because this man has been pursuing me with in very, very strong intentions. Like I knew he wanted to marry me. He wasn't just like, you know, thought I was cute. He was very serious about me. So in order for me to date him, I knew I had to be in a place where like marriage was on the table for me because to play with his heart like that, if I wasn't really like, oh, I don't think we can get married, I think would have been very cruel. It was the reason I'd been saying no for two years was because I didn't want to be cruel like that to him. So the reason I said like, basically I decided to marry him and so I dated him does not mean that like if big red flags had come up in the relationship when we started dating, I would have still married him. I think it's really important Important that sometimes things do seem to line up. They do seem to make sense on paper. You do have all the feelings for each other. But if a big red flag comes up, if you have not made the commitment to that person, you do not have to marry them. Like you, even the day you're walking down the aisle, like you have not made that commitment of marriage, do not feel like you have to marry someone just because it makes sense. I wanted to say that because I think it's important as a clarification. <laughs> but anyway, all that goes to say, I basically logically decided to marry David one day. Let's talk about the four main things that I kind of relied on to make that decision. Number one, physical attraction. I'm putting this one first because I don't want people to think what I'm saying is that like, yeah, I just logically decided that this guy was right for me and I was like, sure, he'll do. No, no, no. 
I was so physically attracted to David that it was frustrating because when he was living a lifestyle that didn't jive with the lifestyle that I was living, it's like I still was so attracted to him. So like anytime I saw him, I would inevitably flirt with him, which I felt terrible about because I knew I was leading him on, but like I couldn't stop it because I was so attracted to him and it was so frustrating and he was attracted to me. But I think that physical attraction piece is really important that you have for the person you want to marry. And I know that sounds really stupid, but there's like this really weird Christian advice out there where it, it kind of goes like this. You know, honey, it doesn't matter as much if you're attracted to him. Attraction can follow, but what really matters is that he just loves the Lord and he just loves the Lord with all his heart. And if you find a man who is running after God, you should run after him and, and the attraction part will follow. <clears throat> I'm sorry, um, but if I'm marrying someone, uh, that implies that I'll be doing uh, married things with said someone, to just put it politely. And so you better believe I'm gonna be attracted to that person. <laughs> I don't know why this gets me like every time, but I hear that advice like way too often. It's like attraction doesn't matter. Just worry about his faith. And it's like, there are people that share your faith that you're also attracted to. Like it's okay to wait for someone you're physically attracted to. You don't have to just marry the first Christian you come across. Like that's just so weird to me. And I get where they're coming from like in theory, but I just think that if you tell young like 13 14 year old girls like the only thing to worry about is his faith don't worry about you know being attracted to him what you're basically setting these girls up for is really emotionally confusing dating relationships where they date someone based on like well he loves jesus so that's the only requirement and then like he's trying to make out with them and like they don't want to kiss him back because they're not attracted to him like i just feel like it could end so bad if this advice is actually lived out okay that's all i'm saying for me i was very very attracted to David and I was very thankful to be attracted to him and my fire is burning down so I'm gonna put more wood on it. Number two, lifestyle and character. This to me is a very important piece that people need to think about before they enter a relationship with someone, which is that what is their character? I think I've talked about this on their, the channel before, but for me this kind of goes one step further in you know, what are their values as well? Like what kind of lifestyle do they want down the road? Like for me, I have kind of traditional values. I wanna be a stay at home mom. I'm currently a stay at home wife and I work part time from home making my own hours and it's awesome. But like I never had ambition to climb a corporate ladder or to work, you know, a six figure job. I have some girlfriends that do and it's awesome cheering them on and getting to watch them achieve their dreams. But my dreams were different. And so I wanted to make sure I married someone who understood that and was also okay with it. David had the same values and goals like he was raised wanting to provide for a wife and kids and he was he's totally fine I can work as much as I want he supports me my decision but he also wants it to be clear to me that he's willing to and wants to provide that was really big to me like that was a huge piece like there's not like not every guy out there would be cool with that part of who I am he has the same values and goals I have so he totally understands my desire for those things um, and the second one with the lifestyle part which I think kind of ties in because jobs have a lot to do with it right like he has to have a job that essentially provides for our family or a work ethic that will at least provide him to get a job or get multiple jobs to provide with his job we were going to be able to have a lifestyle that we both wanted which is more a small town maybe own you know one day when we you know save lots of money and get further on down the, our financial goals we can buy a property that has you know maybe one or two acres or some trees like david would love lots of property and i would too like we want the same kind of country quiet lifestyle we don't want to live in downtown toronto and so we weren't going to be fighting about you know where to live or what kind of house to buy or these kinds of things because we very much are in sync on yeah, I'm okay to stay home and do make my own hours and my own job. He's okay to live in a small town. Like all these things lined up really well. At the beginning of the video, I was kind of joking about love conquers all, but this I think is the big part that if couples aren't in sync on the values and lifestyle that you want for your future, you can love each other so much, but this is where a lot of times it ends in heartbreak is because you just can't make your lives mesh. Number three is the history I had to go off of. A lot of people meet their significant other when they like move away to a new city and you just met someone and you don't have like 10 years of history like David and I did. So I get that this isn't applicable to everybody, but in my specific situation, I think the reason I felt so comfortable getting into my relationship was because I had years of being able to see how he treated the women in his life, his sister, his mother, myself, my sister, my friends in high school, seeing how he treated all of us, 
continually over many, many years, there was a very good track record that I was able to um, see. And I think the history of, look, like I've seen you go through struggles in life and I've seen you come through on the other side, stronger, better, uh, wiser. And I can trust like your pattern of growth in the same way that you've seen me go through a lot of stuff and grow and, and, and continue to get better as a person. So, so vice versa, we both knew each other's faults, which in a funny way, I think made us feel more grounded. <laughs> and four, which was so important to me personally was his intentions were very clear. Today, it is so common for both guys and girls, we both do it to just play games and not be clear and the whole, dating pre-dating phase can be so confusing and i had just gotten out of a situation at that point where i felt like i had put a hundred percent effort in for years and years and years and never felt like it was reciprocated and so and i'm, I'm glad that's the case because i'm happy in my marriage now i'm happy everything worked out as it was but at the time i knew that okay one day when i get married i want to feel like my husband pursued me and i don't know this as a scientific fact i'm not making any scientific claims this is just katie's thoughts corner okay but i think that in a lot of women there's a really big desire to be pursued i think we have this desire to know that he will fight for us and he'll put effort in to us and our relationship and so i knew that in order for me to feel special and safe in a relationship i would need him to put effort in as well i really wanted it to be a 50 50 relationship and so that was really comforting to me because again when all the reasons i'd been saying no started to go away i opened my eyes one day and realized like lord i've been praying for this kind of relationship and all of a sudden i'm looking at david with new eyes and i'm realizing that everything on paper i've wanted is right here plus i'm very attracted to the man so it was a very happy discovery that like everything lined up but his intentions was like the thing that really got me realizing like oh i need to look at this with new eyes because he was so intentional but he was never pushy with it too which i think is also he wasn't creepy about it where it's like you shall bear my children and you shall be my wife and i say it is so <laughs> no he he was not creepy at all he was just very honest and open and he gave me so much space like he never pushed me and the day i did tell him like okay let's do it let's date let's let's do this thing he was shocked like he honestly never thought i was gonna come around he was willing to just like be my friend so okay what i'm not trying to say in this video I am not trying to say that we need to only be logical and logic is the key and as long as you make sense on paper it'll work out. <laughs> no, I don't believe that. I think it needs to be both. I think that you need to set yourself up for success when you're entering a relationship with someone and putting your heart in a position to fall in love with this person. You want to know that your heart isn't going to get crushed into a million pieces and so you need to be like have solid ground and facts that you can stand on that together this is going to be a successful relationship. And these are the four things that I thought through that helped me feel that secure. So that's why I'm putting them out there. I'm not trying to say that like, as long as all these things are good, you're good to go. No, okay, please do not blindly live your life off of just what someone said on YouTube. I think the point of this video is just really think critically about the huge decisions in your life. And the person you're gonna marry is a huge decision in your life. You know, I really did not take long for me to fall head over heels with David because I think the reason I wasn't, you know, quote unquote, in love with him when we started dating was because I hadn't let myself fall in love with him. I didn't wanna open my heart up to more hurt unless I was sure that this was the person. And so I worked through everything logically so that we started dating. I told him that first week, basically, like, I will marry you which he was thrilled about. Um, and it wasn't until another month when I said, I love you. And I think that was also to be fair to him because he had told me he loved me and been so intentional with me for so many months. I wanted to make sure that when I said it, I really meant it. And that was exactly the case. I, I very much meant it when I said it. I've meant it every day when I've said it to him since in the past five years. Um, and I have no regrets on the order of things in my relationship, even though they were a bit unconventional. That is a little bit more of the story of myself and David. And we started dating February 25th, 2017. We got engaged July 16th that same year. And then we got married February 24th, 2018. So our entire relationship was 364 days and we were engaged in about four and a half months of which three of those months he was away with the military so we had never even been on like an official proper date really by the time we got engaged so yeah it was a really weird time which is why i just wasn't doing a lot of relationship advice videos back then because i was like i don't even know what to say like 
I'm very happy in my relationship, but it was a weird place to be giving advice from because I definitely am not gonna sit here and be like, everyone should get engaged in four and a half months, you know? Everyone should just start dating someone and get married in a single calendar year. I think that's definitely the best way to do it. You know, you could be long distance and he could be away with the military and the majority of your relationship could be over the phone, but like, it'll definitely work well for you. <laughs> it's just a weird place to be giving advice from. So I hope I've done it in a balanced way today. Thank you for having a little fireside chat with me today. I hope to see you again soon. And until the next time I see you guys, have a great life. Don't be stupid or make bad decisions. Bye.